So today, we're going to be talking about Dane surgery on links in three manifolds. And I guess we should start by defining what a link is. So a n-component link and a three manifold uh, is just a smooth embedding of n-disjoint super close curves in that manifold. And when we have a one-component link, we call that a knot. And for the purposes uh, of this uh, course, we're going to consider two links to be equivalent if there is an orientation preserving uh, automorphism of your manifold, which takes uh, one link to the other. Uh, one thing that I didn't write down here, but you got to keep in mind, is that uh, if there's some sort of ordering on these links, uh, uh, it should preserve the ordering, right? Uh, every link, um, since, we, since, since these are smooth embeddings, we know that every link can be thickened to a, uh, let me make this small. Every link can be thickened to a tubular neighborhood of disjoint solid tori. Um, uh, and last thing is that when you have links in S3, we often represent these as projections uh, onto a plane. Here's an example of a few projections. Uh, so the guy on the left is the unknot of the trefoil in the mid in the middle. This is the left-handed trefoil. Uh, that's also the half link and the uh, Baromian rings there down below. Um, so the statement that I made uh, before will say that um, actually no, that, that's not that's not important. I'm going to move on. So this is just what links are. Now let's uh, do surgery on these links. So if I have a link in a three manifold, the link exterior is what you get just by removing the interior of these two bird neighborhoods that we talked about before. Uh, and when we do that, uh, and we're gonna first just focus on knots, uh, the boundary of each knot, um, each tuber neighborhood of a knot, is just going to be a, a torus, S1 cross S1. Uh, that's what this says right here. Oops. That's what this says right here. Uh, and it's also going to be the boundary of the knot exterior. Since they have the same boundary, we can then glue them together with the homeomorphism, same way we've been doing with these Hager splittings. And we're going to get another three manifold, which is taken by Sergio and on the knot. Uh, the difference is that, of course, knots only bound a torus on one side. They don't have to bound a torus on the other side, right? The, lot, the knot complement may not be a solid torus. So let's draw a picture of what this looks like. So let's say you have, uh, let's do the trefoil picture. Uh, this is good. All right, so this is a neighborhood of a trefoil, say sitting in S3. And if I wanted to see um, the complement of the trefoil, it's going to be all the stuff outside of it, the tuber neighborhood. Right, that's the complement. And we're going to glue on to that a solid torus. So here's our solid torus. And then we just, um, we just glue this inside, right? This just glues into there. All right, any questions so far? We're not, we're not assuming we're in S3, right? No, you can do this in, uh, in any three manifold. Yeah. So we're going to start restricting ourselves to, to simple cases very soon. Uh, so first of all, we're going to look at this lemma. Um, that if we have a knot in an integer homology sphere, uh, and that's a typo. 
that should be M, an integer homogeneous sphere M, then the uh, first homogeneous of the not complement is always going to be the integers. And to see that, um, we know that M is created by gluing together the not complement and a solid torus, right? And then we can use a Meyer-Beer torus sequence like we've done below. And because this is an integer homology sphere, we know that the second and first homologies must vanish. Uh, and then they, so we get isomorphism in the middle. And because the intersection of these two things is a, uh, it's a torus, uh, we know that that has homology a free abelian group of rank two. So that means that uh, these two things together have to be a free abelian group of rank two. And that tells you that the first homology of the not complement has to be an integer. Is that for like a link in S3? Uh, integer homogesphere. And S3 is an example, right? But you know, it actually be any integer homogesphere. But integer homogesphere is important. <laughs> yes. Thanks. All right. So now we're going to make an even further assumption here. We're going to assume that our knot is no homologous uh, in some integer homogesphere. And we're going to define the meridian, which we're going to represent as M, you can see right here, of the knot as a simple coast curve on the boundary of the tuber neighborhood, which uh, bounds a disk in the tuber neighborhood. Uh, and I note that the class of M uh, in the homology of the knot complement is always going to be a generator. And the longitude uh, is going to be any simple coast curve on the boundary of the tuber neighborhood, which is isotopic to the knot itself. There's always uh, lots of choices of longitudes, but the canonical longitude, which we're gonna represent as L, is gonna be uh, the unique longitude of the isotopy, of course, which is no homologous in MK, right? So let's do an example. Uh, the unknot is always a good example. Uh, so I have an unknot. This is a true neighborhood of an unknot. The meridian, uh, let's use blue. It's gonna be something like this. Oh, I'll put an arrow on it already. Uh, let's do, do that later. And the longitude, it's gonna be something like this. Didn't label the meridian. All right. You can also do something a little more complicated, like the trefoil. With a meridian, it's going to be something like this again. Uh, the longitude is going to be a little more complicated because it has to wrap around here. It's gonna be no homologous. And in total, it wraps around three times. Uh, so the canonical longitudes are not always uh, super obvious. It's kind of the point I want to make there. All right. So now we want to define some orientations uh, on this meridian longitude. And the way we're going to define that is we're going to take a, uh, an outward pointing normal vector to our two or neighborhood, which we're going to call N. And we want to orient M, L, and N such that this triple M, L, and N is uh, positively oriented in your, in your manifold. I'm assuming here you've chosen some orientation on your manifold, right? 
So in this case, uh, we, we, could, we could orient our meridian going up this way and our longitude going that way. We could have also reverse the directions of both the, the uh, orientations, which have been fine too. So now with these orientations, M and L, we have a, a unique chosen basis of the first homology of the boundary of, uh, of your not complement. And so now we can uh, use this to define our gluing map, how we're gonna glue in uh, this solid torus. So we can define this gluing map by, you know, like a pick four integers, P, Q, R, and S, where mu, which is going to be uh, this curve here in the solid torus, this curve uh, right here, and lambda, which is this curve right here, these are not the same as the meridian longitude that we defined earlier, because those are defined on the not complement. These are defined, uh, mu and lambda are defined on the solid torus. But the image of uh, mu is just going to be p times meridians and q longitudes. And the image of uh, lambda is going to be r meridians and s longitudes. And of course, p and q should have, uh, should be relatively prime for this to, uh, for this to be a um, homomorphism. When this comes from a homomorphism, homeomorphism, I should say. And we have a lemma that says that this gluing depends only on the image of mu. And the reason why this is the case is the same as lemma 1.6 from yesterday that, that Jaron uh, showed, the exact same idea. So that's why we don't really care about uh, this part of it. We usually just care about the top part. So only P and Q are important for us. All right. So now, if we're given uh, our P and Q, uh, which we can consider to be a fraction, we got, that's what we often like to do is write it as a fraction. Um, and of course, we got to include in one over zero, since that's not technically a rational number. Uh, this can give us a surgery instruction uh, of how to glue in the solid torus. And we can use notation M P over Q K that we have right here, which is just surgery uh, on the manifold M along the knot K, uh, where uh, I said C here, but this should be uh, mu, goes to uh, uh, PM to QL. So that's what this notation is going to mean. Uh, when Q is one, which means that surgery instruction is just an integer, then this is called an integral surgery. All right. So let's uh, do some examples here. So the first example, uh, what happens if we do one over zero surgery on a knot in, a, in, in this manifold? Well, of course, when you think about what happens is, you know, you have some knot in a manifold. I'll just use an unknot just to make it simple. And we know that the one zero curve, which is uh, this curve right here, this is a one zero curve. Uh, this curve bounds a disc, but if this curve bounds a disc, uh, well, it's, it gets mapped to a curve in a slot torus that bounds a disc. Uh, that's the same as just gluing in the torus the exact same way it, it was cut out, right? So this means that the one fold we get in the end uh, should be the same as the one we got in the beginning.
All right. Um, let's try three over two surgery on the unknot in S3. So how does this work? So first I'm gonna draw my solid torus. And I'm gonna make sure this is solid torus by just col coloring this in. This is the solid torus. And we're gonna glue this into, I'm gonna draw this like over here. Uh, the complement of the solid torus, and I'm gonna color on the outside here just to remind you that this is the complement of the solid torus, right? And we care about uh, the image of this curve. And if we're doing three over two surgery, it's gonna get glued onto this curve. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Yes, that looks good. And I better put a direction on these. These are going this way. All right. So that's what the surgery is doing, right? But of course, the complement of a uh, solid torus in S3 is also a solid torus. And so we can actually redraw this picture by sort of flipping the right picture inside out. Uh, so this is also the same as, uh, let's just go down here a little bit and make sure this is real big. So if I flip this picture inside out, so now we, we're actually doing this as like an actual sol solid torus, this green curve is really getting uh, glued to this curve. Maybe my sense must be that's fine. This curve is still up there. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gluing two solid tori where uh, the green curve on the left side is getting mapped to the green curve on the right side. Does anyone know what manifold we're getting? L three two. Close. It's actually L minus three two. <laughs> Close enough though. All right. Uh, in fact, in general, uh, I kind of ran out of space right here. I just write this on the side. Uh, in general, if I do P over Q surgery on S three on the unknot. Uh, I should get L minus P Q. That's important. I, I box it here. I leave it up there for a while. So surgeries on the unknot in S3 are just lint spaces. All right. So now we know how to do surgery on a knot. This is a natural way to extend this to the idea of surgery on a link. So I have a link with n components. Uh, all I have to do is just make sure I have surgery instructions for each component, right? So if I pick uh, these, uh, these are just gonna be rational numbers with one zero included. If I pick one for each knot, then we can form surgery on each component. And let's just focus on links in S3. So that gives us to our big theorem of today, which is theorem uh, first proved by Licorice and independently by Wallace later on, which says that every uh, post orientable three manifold can be obtained by integral surgery on a link in S3. So we can actually start with S3 
pick some link in S3 and do surgery on it, and you can get whatever the manifold uh, closed orientable uh, that you like. And the reason why this is true really stems from this lemma, which says if I have two handle bodies, uh, H and H prime, and I glue these two handle bodies together in two different ways, H1 and H2, such that these two gluing maps differ by just a Dane twist uh, along some curve, then I can, uh, then the manifolds that we get from uh, each gluing are gonna differ by integral surgery. Uh, that's the content of what this limb is saying. Let's talk about why this lemma is true. All right. So first, um, we're going to push C into the, the, hand, the first handle body. Uh, to get the knot, uh, to get the knot uh, KC. All right, so the picture I'm going to draw here is, you know, something like this. This is H. Uh, we have some curve like C, like this. And we just sort of push it into the handle body, right? And then I'm going to let A uh, be an analyst, which connects C to uh, the tuber neighborhood. Of our, of our knot. All right, so how does this look like? So let's say I looked at the surface of H and somewhere on here we have a curve C. This is just like a slice of it, right? Well, we can push C inside, and if you push C inside, uh, we get a tubular neighborhood. So this is like a, a tubular neighborhood of our knot, uh, KC, right here, underneath. And then you can see that uh, we have, uh, there's always can, you always can find this analyst right here, which sort of glues these two together. So that's what A is. So now that we have A, we want to define uh, a homo uh, homomorphism, or really a, an automorphism, uh, on H when you take out the uh, interior of the neighborhood of the knot C to this same thing. I'm not going to write it again. It's, a, it's an automorphism. Uh, we're going to define this uh, you want to define this by uh, what we call a Dane twist along an analyst. And so the idea here is that if we cut along this analyst A, we can take one side of it and just slide it all the way around 360 degrees. And we can glue it right back on. And we're gonna get the exact same manifold because we're gluing on the points right next to the exact same point that we were on to before. However, 
if we look at what happens on the boundary, once we do this, This is just going to be the day twist along C. Uh, <clears throat> similarly on the Tudor neighborhood. You know, day twist along the Tudor neighborhood also. All right, so are we okay so far? Jonathan, can you go back to the statement of the there really quickly? The statement of the lemma? The lemma, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, what we eventually want is to show that uh um that th these two manifolds that we get from this one and this one, that we get from gluing these two uh handlebars together, these two different ways, uh it's gonna be related by surgery. That's what we're trying to do here. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to let M prime I just to find this just to be a uh, to be H, uh, the first uh, handle body, minus the uh, interior of our Kluber neighborhood. Then we're gonna uh, glue on the other handle body via whatever homomorphism we used, right? So if you think about what this is, we have uh, we're just taking the first handle body and we, we're cutting out the tuber neighborhood of our knot and just gluing it on the same way we were going to do in the end. So this really should be our two manifolds, uh, MI, and just a reminder, right, MI is just H glued to H prime by HI, right? These are the two things we care about. This is just going to be this minus the interior neighborhood of a knot. Now you kind of see what we're trying to do here. Um, is we want to really show that, okay, if you want to relate these two things, you can relate them just by gluing in a solid torus into these neighborhoods in such a way that it just differs by a, a, a surgery. Uh, that's the integer. Uh, we've already shown that, uh, we already have enough to show that these are related by surgery, right? Now we gotta show that it's uh, gonna be integral surgery. So now, I'm gonna find this new map, which I'll call Psi from M, actually one prime to M two prime. Um, and it's going to be this map here, where we take the image of a point, okay, well, if it's in, um, it was in this first part here, uh, we're going to take it to the image of this sort of twisting analyst, uh, this analyst dane twist that we did above, up here. That's what we are going to do. And then on the other uh, handle body, we just do the identity map.
So this is going to be your homeomorphism. And it's going to take, um, it's going to take the meridian of Let me write this first. We're going to take the meridian of the or not KC. And actually, let's find the longitude also. So the meridian of the knot is going to be, let's actually let's do the picture. So the meridian just goes around this way, right? or the other way. And the longitude, it's gonna go along this way. It's gonna be where this thing intersects here, right? And using this basis, we see that uh, the image of this meridian uh, it's going to be uh, I think I yeah, I think I wrote this wrong, but that's okay. It's going to be plus or minus uh, the meridian plus the longitude because it does a Dane twist on the surface here. It's going to follow from this that M2 is a uh, plus or minus one surgery on M1 along this night KC. So that proves the lemma. Since plus and minus one, those are both integers, right? So now let's prove the uh, licorice boss theorem. And just as a reminder, let's go back up to the statement. We want to prove that every closed orientable three manifold can be obtained by integral surgery on a Lincoln S3. So this is our goal. Oops. So first, we're going to take a closed orientable uh, three manifold. And as we know, uh, this manifold must have some Hager splitting. And suggestively, you're going to call this H2. But we also know that we can represent S3 uh, also as a genus G Hager splitting using some other gluing. Uh, oh yeah, I should say here that H2 is a uh, uh, orientation reversing uh, uh, map, right? All right, and this has the same thing. Reversing map. Yeah. 
So what this means is that if we composed uh, H2 inversion H, uh, this has to be orientation preserving, correct? From boundary map to its, uh, from the boundary of H to itself. And any orientation preserving map uh, on a closed orientable uh, surface can be obtained by Dane twist along some curves. We don't know how many. Right, and this is gonna give us what we want, right? Because now we know that the two maps are just related by Dane twist. Tn, and once we know that uh, by the lemma that we just proved, we have the m is you know plus or minus one surge on each of these uh, components, uh, given by pushing these uh, curves into the uh, into the handle body H. And that gives that that finishes the theorem. All right, that was a long theorem. How do you guys feel about that theorem? All right. So now that we know that. Every closed orientable theory manifold uh, can be obtained by surgery on a linking S3. We can actually use these framed uh, link diagrams to describe the manifolds. So, uh, so if I have a theory manifold, I can find it, I can find it uh, using pictures like this. Uh, so if I want to get, say, the lens space LPQ. From what we said above, this is just uh, an unknot with uh, minus P over Q surgery, which we just defined by just putting the little uh, surgery instruction right next to the, the knot. Another example, uh, which is really well known, that if I take the left handed trefoil, and I say do one minus one surgery on it. This turns out is the Prunkray homogeneous sphere. Uh, and of course, I did these with knots. And sometimes you need links, and I didn't bring any examples, but that's fine. We'll do some more examples in, the, in a couple of minutes. So this is where frame links are, right? You draw a link, and you know you you put surgery coefficients next to it. You can even do things where you take uh, Let's do something like this. So I can do a link of four unknots. And I can just give these different numbers, like minus three, one half, four, seven, right? And this is describing some three manifold, which I don't know. <laughs> but that's the way we can describe a three manifold. Wait, does the notion of framing have to do anything with like framing the normal bundle anyway? Like uh, framings? Yes. Um, we're going to, if, if you come to the, if you come to the, the, the Kirby calculus course, cause that's where in framing the normal bundles becomes more, uh, more important. Uh, you'll see that they are related. Thanks. That, that's why we call them framings. So here, by definition, they, these are just surgery coefficients, right? Thanks. No problem. All right, so lastly, we're going to uh, look at this last theorem. So if we use this notation for a uh, 
a fraction decomposition of a rational number, a fraction expansion of a rational number, I should say. Um, then if you give me some P over Q and I have this sort of uh, fraction expansion for it, then the length space LPQ is just given by uh, this link, uh, this frame link diagram. And let's do a couple examples of this. Uh, let's do, let's start easy, right? So if I wanted to do L P1, well, that's just this picture, right? All right, what if I said that P is equal to, I'm gonna find it to be X1, X2 minus one, and Q is X2. Uh, nope, this is just, uh, find it so that this is just X1 minus one over X2. That's what this, this gives us. Well, The claim is that this is the same as, as this guy, right? Let's see why it might that be true. Well, what is this saying really? Well, what this is saying is take a solid torus over here and a solid torus over here. We're gonna glue them into uh, this, 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 uh, uh, this space that's given by uh, removing the neighborhoods of, the, of this link, right? So we're gluing them into this space where everything is missing. All right. And so let's label some things. So first of all, let's, let's draw on our meridians. Uh, so we get one meridian here, let's do it this direction. And the other meridian, I want to do this direction. And if I do pick that, that means the longitude has to go this way. And this longitude has to go this way. All right. Let's call this L2. This is L1. This is meridian one. This is meridian two. And we also have, uh, let's draw in mu one. Uh, and I would go and do the same color. Uh, this is lambda one. It's, let's say this is mu two, and let's say this is lambda two. All right. So if I notice something about the thing in the middle here, is if you look real closely at it, this is actually um, a thickened torus. This is the analyst cross S1. Um, and this first uh, meridian M1 is actually isotopic to uh, the longitude L2. And similarly, M2 is isotopic to the longitude L1. All right. So if I take a solid torus and I glue on a thickened uh, torus onto it, then I'm just going to get another torus. I'm just getting a bigger torus. So we know that this entire process is really gluing two tori together. So we definitely know that this is a lens space, right? Uh, so we know that this is a lens space.
The only question is which lens space it, is it? And to figure out which lens space it is, you just gotta figure out what the gluing is, right? And so first I'm gonna consider this gluing, and then later I'll consider that gluing. So the first gluing, it is given by uh, the surgery, which is just uh, this, uh, this map. But then once we map into the uh, thickened uh, torus, we have to uh, account for this swapping of the, of the, the meridian longitude. And we account for that by just swapping these generators. And then finally, we count for the other gluing, gluing which we take the other surgery uh, instruction, but we really should do the inverse, all right? And it turns out that this is actually the same as the, the guy we had before. But, it's re but a priori, this is the inverse that we're, that we're using. And if you want to pile all these matrices out, you get this guy. Which of course is just minus uh, QP minus one X one. And so since we know that this is the map, uh, we know that this lens space must be uh, L PQ that we started with. All right, um, so that's a demonstration of this, uh, this theorem. Uh, I had a proof written up, but for the interest of time, I think I'm just gonna stop here for now. And maybe I'll put some of this stuff in the exercises. Just you guys would like that. All right, so are there any other questions? Yeah, Jonathan, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so this like continued fraction uh, representation that you've written down. Yes. So I, I'm. I'm. So you say that given that framing of the seat of the chain of unknots. Right. Um, you get LPQ, but mm -hmm. shouldn't you still get the same manifold if you like reverse the order of all the XIs? Like if you had like X1 then uh, XN then XN minus one then all the way down to X1 from left to right. Is that not true? So if I start with XN and get all the way back to the to, to the front? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so then like and maybe maybe this is obvious if you just use an algebra, but like that would seem to imply that like this continued fraction uh, notation is like ah. well, so there's a few things you gotta consider here, right? So continued fraction notations. Um, ah, well, continued fraction notations aren't unique. That's important. But also remember uh, the LPQs uh, are not unique either, right? Oh. They're, they're different, you know, they're, def they're definitely, you can have different Q primes here and still have the same manifold. So you might actually get a different fraction, but it's probably going to be the same lens space. What's important. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a good question, though. 